Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the DTB podcast, the number one barber podcast on YouTube and of the world. Stay down, came up, God made a way. Today, we actually have a special edition. We have a special guest, a Cosmo and a stylist. But before I introduce her, I'm going to pass it out to my co-host. What's up, what's up, DTB fam? We're back today, and we got a great special guest. We're switching up the knob. We're turning things around. We actually got one of the greatest stylists from the city of Downey, the platinum queen herself, Linda, the hairstylist. Let's, Let's go. go. Thanks, guys. Linda, how was your morning so far? It's been great. A day off is always a good day. Okay, was your day off? Well, yeah. yeah it's my day off too, yeah. but I, I come yep, do this same. whole episode. So who are you and what do you do? My name is Linda and I'm from the city of Downey. I actually grew up there, so that's pretty much what I know. Um, and I try to adventure off, OC, whatever, but I always come back to my roots, yeah. which is... Downey. That's hey, right. let me ask you something about Downey. Do you consider Downey like white Mexicans or no? Have you heard that? Have you guys heard that? <laughs> yeah. Well, like rich Latino Hispanic kind of. I personally don't, but okay. when I talk to other people, they're like, "Oh my god, you're so whitewashed," and I'm yeah, like, yeah. "I'm, I don't know any better, so maybe." <laughs> yeah, because um, we at least people in my barbershop, people I grew up with, they they talk about Downey as a wealthy Hispanic area. That's what yeah. they talk about. I mean, I, I actually, I've been in and out of Downey for, for a few years, and I think that um, being in those areas, what I do know is that Hispanic community is growing heavy in Downey. Yeah. Yes. You know, yeah, yeah. People, the Hispanic people are actually out there putting business out there. They know that the money is there. They know that, you know, the people with great gratitude are there. So shout outs to Downey and all the Hispanics opening up business in there, just like Linda herself. Tell us more and a little yourself. bit about your and Congrats. my yeah, hey, hey, hey. Props to me. Let's too, go. Man. Prop to K. Oh, man. Let's go. So Let's proud go. of you. Right on, right on. So where where are you located? Uh so you you, you have a, a salon. Is it fully a, a whole uh, only a salon? How many people work in there? Um uh, I have a few know. girls doing different stuff. So hair, nails, and lashes. So it's a multiple um service type of salon it does nice. not just focus on hair which is my thing but we have other services so clients hop from one chair to another which is mm. nice they could book their day and leave fully like catered to so that's nice you said it, what is it called glam beauty artistry glam beauty artistry that's so dope yeah which is kind of like a tongue twister which yeah. i realized but see artistry comes in different forms so i wanted to add that to my name and okay. glam like come on who does not want that glam life? Yeah. Like at least as yeah, a girl yeah. Yeah. and being in the industry, I love having from head to toe being done up. I don't know about other girls, but like that's my life. So I created this brand, so to speak. For myself, I, I think all girls want to do that. Yeah, most girls, if you could, they if just, you could. Yeah, they just can't. But most girls would love to spend money on their yes, hair. Yes, if on you could nails. ask probably any girl, uh -huh. what do you want to do? Uh, my nails, my hair, my lashes, and like yeah. all the girl stuff. Yeah, right now I'm having the gender reveal this weekend, and all the girls are worried about their nails. Yes. I'm like, bro, why are you worried about your nails? <laughs> but I know for them it's like it's really important. They gotta Look, get their I got nails my up. nails done yesterday just to come on <laughs> this thing because I felt like ugly without them. So yeah. I was like, no, I got stuff to do, so I'm gonna get my nails done. Okay, I think that was a good niche though that you started a multiple service business for girls, right? Is, is it for girls or is it for everyone? Um, I do have men. I okay. actually funny story behind my whole hair journey i started off as a barber so, so to speak that's oh, all i did because my boss was a barber so she was like nope you're doing it and you know what i love her so much if you have a, like a mentor or someone who's gonna take you under your wing that's the best 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 advice yeah i could ever give anyone find someone who's gonna show you the way because honestly first off that's hard. No one, yeah. no one's gonna give you anything for free. But if you find someone that's willing to take you under your wing, you're blessed beyond blessed. Yeah, yeah. I think mentors are the. I always tell people mentors are the cheat codes for self development yes. for achieving your success because yes. they already went through what you what you want to go through. Ask you know? the exactly. questions. Do the 
the work. The work. <laughs> <laughs> Do the work and learn from someone who's been in the industry good or bad because yeah. i learned from her what not to do mm. and what to do and when someone's in the business for so long you pick up on a lot of stuff and you're like i would not do that i'm gonna do this yeah. and one thing she told me was always start small Start your shop small, oh you know. God. You know, I we're never spoiled. heard that. I never heard that. I always we're, heard we're uh -huh. spoiled as Americans, we're spoiled, and we want to run. And like, I want this whole big old, like, it's a lie at the end yeah. of the day, it's not gonna work out. It's and not gonna work out as quick as you think. No, you gotta do no, the work, you gotta do the work. Yep. So, um, she said, start of small taxes purposes mm -hmm. and i was like mm, now i get it but of course ah, i want this i want that i want to start like you know but honestly and i've told somebody else who wanted to open up a business start small and start from there and then jump to something bigger once you're su successful and she failed terribly mm, why she want to she want she, she wanted, tried to go too big not too big but i mean you need a lot of stuff not just Money wise, and you need a lot of money Research, just to even run a small business. You need huh? a lot of money. Mm. You know, people judge you. Oh, you got this little shop, but you know how much that little shop <laughs> yeah. cost yeah. a month. Yeah. yeah, correct. Like, no, they don't know. Like, I wish you could step into my shoes and pay all these bills yeah. just for my shop, not my personal life, not my mortgage, not nothing. Just my just shop. shop. Just yes. a shop. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and then they would see you as much more because i feel like everybody downgrades us mm -hmm. because it's just a little shop it's not just a little shop yeah yeah it's, not. it's so, your baby it's your dream come true so but it's it a is. lot of money yeah. yeah correct correct it's a lot of capital you need yes. a lot of capital but so what, what was the biggest risk that you that you faced when re opening your business um nothing honestly there's nothing no, no city <laughs> no, city problems no nothing because I, I feel like i you were prepared i was prepared because mm. as weird as it sounds that boss that i have she would leave me with the shop she would so many lessons i learned from her just giving me that um responsibility that i did not know i was going to use that years down the line because she would always tell me i was young i was 19 years old 20 mm. 21 we're, we're running a shop almost already almost not the financial part no. but everything else yeah the management part of it yeah which is number one yeah 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 it is. um so if you want to start a business start there um and I, i just thought like okay whatever i was young i was, I was so Naive. So you were not taking it seriously? No, I was like, just, okay, <laughs> I got yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And she trusted me for whatever reason. I think she saw potential because she yeah. always would tell me, Linda, one day you're going to have your own shop. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, you didn't believe her? Or no, what? I didn't. Really? No, I didn't. But yeah. she would always tell me, you got this, you got that, you got the personality, all the things that I was like, I don't. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see it. I don't you, care. You didn't see it as valuable at, at that point. No, But obviously, 10 years went by. I hit almost 30. I think I was like 27. And then it hit me. And I was like, dang. She, t she taught me everything that I was going to face eventually. Yeah. You, you know what happens at, at that point? That we go through so much for like six, seven years. And we're not noticing how much we grow. Yeah. And so like, I'm, I'm pretty sure when you hit 30, you were like, damn, I went through all this? And I survived all this? And time fucking yeah, flies, bro. Yeah, flies. And yeah. you've just been, like, going through struggles and stressing, but you, you're fighting, you're going through it. It takes you a moment to actually be like, oh, my God, I went through all this. If I would have never gone through all this, I wouldn't be right here. Okay, let me ask you yeah. one thing. How yeah. do you handle professional life and your personal life? And you, like, just... How? Like you're a kid at that time. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's tough. Yeah, 19, you want to party, you want to go experience yeah. the culture you're on and all that. The wrong track. So let us know. How did you do it? Yeah, how, yeah. <laughs> how did you do it? How do you do it? How did you do it then and how are you doing it now? What's different? Well, to be completely honest, I was a hot mess. <laughs> you're a hot mess being young? <laughs> being were young. Wrong. I, I did wrong. college. I went to college. Okay. Which I think is something everyone should experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Not a lot of people get to experience college. No, no, they yeah. don't. Yeah, so if you could put your kids through Wait, did through you finish college? college? <laughs> okay, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hopefully you did Yeah, no. No, I didn't. But, but you the, went through it. The funny part about college is I was doing 
business out of all things. I was like, eh, I'm going to do business. Like, little did I know business was going to be my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But something caught my attention. It's just college teachers business um, in a way where we're just like, I don't even want to get into business. Nah. I, did, I did business too. I did, yeah. I did business. And uh, they don't really teach you like the small things. I, I wish they would have taught us how to start a small business. Even yeah, taught no. it. They don't teach you any of that. Not even going to beauty school. They teach you nothing that has to do with the real world. Yeah. You just got to pass this test. I don't know about other like industries like real estate. I'm sure it's the same thing. You just focus on certain book things. Yeah. And then you go from there. Yeah, Which yeah, yeah. has nothing to do with the real life. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah. So so how do you balance your life right now, though? What, what are you mm. doing different? Because uh, for me right now that I'm, I'm talking to you, you... Look like you're running your business professionally, right? My business number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you have information that. Remember how we, before we started, you asked me why are Lati why are Latinos being underestimated in every industry? Why are they not shining? And we said because they don't have this motivation, right? But me, my my uh, understanding of it is that they don't have information. I don't think they don't have understanding because we are hard workers. Yeah. When have you met not a Hispanic person who has not thrived and found a way to make ends meet? Yes, yes, yes. Correct, correct. I think we we are understanding of it, but we just we never want to level up even more. I don't think we pr put ourselves out there mm -hmm. for opportunities. Saying how I said certain like um, hair like in our hair industry, there's like behind the chair and all these like things that they put stylists out and being recognized for the work that we do. Mm -hmm. How come we don't take those type of like opportunities and let ourselves shine and put our work out there? Why don't we take those? Yeah, yeah. I've even thought about it myself. Like I, I think I'm a decent worker and I do crazy shit at the end yeah. of the day. Like how come I have not done that? Because I feel like, Oh, I'm not good enough. Like these people. Yeah. But why not? I'm pretty sure I'm pretty out there. Yeah, 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 So no. why haven't I done it? Because I feel like no one's going to look at my work mm. at the end of the day. I, I agree that it, it is more like uh, is the investors control most of the outcomes, right? But I also think that it, it does come down to you networking and going and getting around these people maybe who like, maybe you go to a networking event and you know one of the judges from behind the chair. Right. And now he, one day he sees your work. He's like, hey, look, I see, I know her. I see her work. I'll probably vote for it. Okay, her. so again, question, why are we not networking and going to these events? Why? Well, um, I got to tap in on that because yeah. I'm the one that's actually going to these events and I'm oh, networking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proud of you. Tapping in with these <laughs> yeah. people. And I was once in your shoes as well where I was like, man, like nobody's going to want to shake my hand. Nobody's going to say what's up to me. You know, like I'm nobody. I have fucking 200 followers, bro. <laughs> like who's going to follow me or who's going to... But... Stepping into the room and actually having the nuts to just shake people's hands and be like, hey, what's up? Look, I'm KO. You know, I cut hair. I'm learning this. I like what you got going on. Like, just shaking the people's hand and sharing the Instagram has got me to build confidence, has got me to go up to people that I look up to with that confidence and even take a picture with them, post it, and then have them repost it. And now they're following me. And now we're connecting in a totally different level that if I would have never gone out to these events and shook their hand and got out of my my shell to do that like I don't think I would be where I'm at right now mm -hmm. I'm know? so proud of you because it takes a lot a lot of guts and confidence at the end of the day if you're shy look I feel like people judge a person for being outspoken and I yeah. get it sometimes I take it to a different level yeah, yeah, but yeah. if you're gonna sit there and be shy and yeah. quiet who's gonna know about you yeah yep so yeah. go ahead and judge me because trust me, I've gotten a lot of that. But I'm like, I'm not going to sit back and not express myself. I'm very, yeah. very expressive Correct. and I'm not going to be quiet because it makes you comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've That's learned right. that kind of like the hard way. But it's like who becomes a star with being quiet? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody. Correct. Nobody. Nobody. You got to go through the through the. Trials and tribulations of what it's going to take to get you to be the spotlight. And what are the trials being judged, being um, compared to somebody else in the industry or whatnot? Talked about, you yeah. know, looked down on, you know, and all that stuff. And so I how, think how, it's hard. How is that in your industry? Do you feel like you have a lot of haters? Or you feel like the, um, the Cosmo haters, industry is, is like that? Not 
haters necessarily, but I feel like people are, are always judging. They got something to say. And thank God I'm really good with that because I don't care. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You, you call me the worst thing where I'm like, all right, cool. Because I, I'm so secure in myself. I know what I've done. I know what I haven't done, and I'm a pretty decent human being. So I could be like, if you want proof, I got proof. I yeah. have nothing Not to, hide. to hide or prove to you. Yeah. And second, who are you to tell me anything? And listen, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Go say it, say it. Talk to us. Usually <laughs> the people who are putting you down and saying all these things, like, I don't want to say this, but they're usually right below you doing oh, less yeah. than you no, doing yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing judging from the outside and it's like okay but how, why should i even consider you an opinion like what yeah you shouldn't even be afraid to say that they're under you because yeah look, look, this is what i learned look i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show you this this is an advice <laughs> that i learned. look so there's business and personal life right when it comes to business right if you're not doing better than me in business i'm not listening to you at all i'm not yep. in my personal life If my dad, he's in a different situation, he comes to give me advice in my personal life, I'm listening to him. I don't right. care if he's not doing better than me. He's my dad. So in my personal life, I'll take advice from my dad, from my mom, from my uncle, from my cuñado, even if they might not be doing it because they're family, right? They care for you. But in the business side, if you're not doing better than me, I, I would just, like, ignore you completely. I agree because people, like, take all kinds of criticism they're like oh my god they said this and that. but i'm like listen are they doing better than you yeah listen to them if they're like multi-millionaires and they have something to say feel bad yeah if they're telling you hey you're messing up mm -hmm. but uh some fucking loser from around the corner is telling you this this and that and be like um who what yeah yeah it doesn't make sense i don't value you at that high regard so why should i what why what you're saying which is nothing mattered to me yeah which is something most likely that they're making up because it's not true they don't know you that far they're just judging you because you said this and that mm -hmm. i just feel like it's hard now because social media is just so right. cool now it's like but if you're gonna make it hard let me tell you you better have tough skin yeah so tell us about because it sounds like you You have a lot of build up or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I would, we, you know, I'm sure the audience and us, we want to know a little bit more of what that side is for, for the Cosmo side, because I could see, you know, a world full of girls trying to get all the girls to sit in their chair. And they're all you feisty. Know, and they're <laughs> all, you know, but <clears throat> there has been a sense of, well, at least in the barber industry, It, it's starting to feel a little bit more united yeah. to where we, we, we don't mind if they see how we're cutting hair and, you know, the extra things that we're doing. H has anything changed in the industry for you since you actually got into the hair industry uh, where you feel like it's evolving into a positive way or do you feel like it's actually getting worse or what is your take on that? Well, from the cosmetology side, because I do deal with a lot of girls and... Like, I'm going to take social media into effect and TikTok, which is like, you know, I'm I'm old at the end of the day. Like, <laughs> I started, I have 15 years under my belt. I'm, yeah. People don't believe it because I, I look young, but I'm I'm not young. Like, I, I started very young. So by the time I hit 30, which is like now, I feel like the new generation attacks you for how you do hair, which is fine totally respect that but like the new generation can come out here when I'm telling you how I work what I do and yes it's very aggressive but I have years of experience yeah. I would not tell someone that's new in this industry do this and that because I know you're really gonna mess up I would never give that advice but you can't tell me the younger newer generation that I'm doing my job wrong and on social media I get attacked <laughs> You do? A lot. On Instagram or on TikTok more? TikTok. TikTok, It's right? aggressive. Like, mm. you... So you get I like to fight back sometimes, in, and in I'm like, a, Like, down. you're on a live, and people are, like, commenting, like, Not why is she doing this? She's stroking the brush incro <laughs> improperly, <laughs> or what? what is it? How do you... I'm trying to put in like, so, are they screaming outside of your barbershop? You're not doing, I mean, out of your no, business, so, like, you're not doing this right, or, you know, or w w what is that like? Take us through so, it so we want to live it with you. TikTok is all videos and yeah. you literally show people your day-to-day -day life, how you're doing things. So now you're showing what you're mixing, how you're doing, what, how you're doing it and everyone's freaking out. And it's like, 
that's all I know. That's yeah. how I do things. I'm not telling you do it my way. I'm not telling you my way is the only way. Yeah. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this is how I do it. Here it is. And that's it. I'm showing you. But showing people how you do things not traditionally, especially to the new generation, is just chaotic. Everyone will go against you. And it's kind of hard, especially because I'm so expressive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you did not notice. I am very expressive. So it, it, on my side, I have to get off of social media because I want to like tell them like no this is you know like this is how i do it explain myself but i ha i don't have to explain myself to nobody it works for me i built a successful business how are you gonna come and tell me how to do my job or not how to do it yeah does that make sense yeah yeah, yeah no yeah it does make sense i think the reason why these the, the young generation is trying to tell us what to do is because there's other fake guru gurus showing them how to get rich quick and this is the way and they don't know that we've been playing the long game. Yeah, you know? I mean, think about it. It's like a cult. Like, like they a believe cult. a yeah. certain influencer and they run with it. And it's like somebody else comes and you're like, you're the devil. And yeah, yeah like, you're wrong. Damn. This is not what I learned. <laughs> exactly. Because that happens with us in, in the barber industry. That's the same thing. Right now they're teaching young barbers. I, know, I, know, I don't know if you could agree, but they're teaching young barbers that have like two years in the game, three years, and they're like 16, 17. Or oh, charge 350. This is how you charge 350 for a haircut. And then they go and try to do that. And they realize that they aren't able to get clients at 350 because they don't have any experience. But they're selling yeah. them yes. this false dream, you know. They're so they're, far they're selling them this false dream that they're starting to believe it. And then they realize that it's not true. Okay, and then they come out of school thinking they're going to make 350 out of one client. And how do you get them into your shop, in my shop, whoever shop? And how do you tell them you got to hustle? They don't, yeah, want to. they don't want to. They don't want to. They don't. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> they don't. Right. They want to make 350 right now. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you teach them that without thinking you're the in the wrong? Because I don't know about you guys, but I'm having such a hard time getting girls that want to work and Ooh. hustle and make their own brand, take their um, art out there. And at the end of the day, it's art and you have to convince people that you're worth it. Correct. I don't care what you do. Who are you to tell me you're going to touch my hair? No, you better prove it. You better, pro you better yeah. prove it. You better prove that you're going to leave my hair right. Yeah. So in this industry, I feel like right now it's the toughest to get the girls to want to come in and put in the work. Mm. I'm so, having so much hard time So with you that. think they, the, the your workers are not having that work ethic? They're I mean, I'm going to say my workers, but oh, the new overall. ones. Oh, like, new ones. you interview a girl and they're like, oh, like, I don't do anything. Like, I just want to come in and, like, give me clients. Give me, oh, man. It's like, man. okay, people are visual. Like, yeah. They want to see what you do. Yeah. You know what I noticed with, with the, with the, in the cosmo industry that a lot of women are going to, are trying to do barber, barbering because they say, Oh, I don't like dealing with girls because they're so picky. And I, and, I, and I already learned that. It's not that they're picking. You're just doing it wrong. Men, You're leaving their color wrong, you know? In my opinion, men are pickier. I have mm. my, my guy clients from like 15 years ago. They come in with three pictures. I want the back like this. I want the front like this. And I want the sides like this. And I'm like, bruh. Yeah, yeah. It's impossible. <laughs> with a whole campechana. And yeah, but honestly... Proving yourself and doing the work, they'll stick with you for a lifetime. You're like, dude, there's a barber shop down. Leave me. Like, go over there. They're like, no, you, you're you doing it. And it's like, fuck. I, yeah. I'm doing the work and they're not going to go anywhere else. Yeah. Because they trust you. Yeah. And so what was the, when you were starting, what was the worst uh, incident that happened to you? Because I know platinum, doing platinums are really difficult. Uh, just on men, it's difficult. Now imagine that much hair. Um, like, what was your worst, like, experience that you're like, damn? It's not even platinum. What let was me it? tell you. It's just, like, <laughs> stupid things. Like, honestly, I don't even know why people or, like, the manufacturers don't put this on labels. Mm. Not to throw names out there, but, like, I'm just going to say protein and bond builders. You guys know where I'm hitting? Bond yeah. What? What? What are they like, saying? <laughs> yeah, it's saying okay. okay. They're in a lawsuit. Uh -huh. I know they're in a lawsuit. Okay. I don't know what. So call me crazy, but I caught on even before they were in, in a lawsuit. Damn. So um 
you know you're good when you catch on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, one of my ladies came in and was like, I want to go blah, 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 blah. We're doing the work. And her hair is in, in smoking and like melting like chicle. Like People that don't apart. know what chicle is, it's that's gum. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but that's after you put the, the shampoo or the... No, the, the bleach. Because oh, I work with bleach 24-7. Oh. Like, that's my oh, thing, okay. right? We're trying to go blonde. Every, every girl wants to go blonde. So I put the bleach on and the hair... She's like, oh my God, it's getting hot. I'm like, that's not a good sign. Wait, that bleach was from that brand? That you, from, no, just oh. bleach and... Okay, okay. Bleach Any general. chemical that's bleach. Okay, okay. On top of the chemical from these brands that are oh. in a lawsuit. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I was like, okay. Like, I didn't know at the moment. So I'm... I almost fainted. Like, that's how bad it was. Damn, what did I'm the like client standing do? at the yeah. bowl and I'm like... <gasps> I thought it was my fault. I'm going to take the responsibility 1,000%. I'm the one doing your hair. I'm going to take the responsibility. Like, I'm doing your hair. Yeah, yeah. It's my fault for doing whatever I'm doing. So, long story short, it doesn't... It happens that one time. We get on with our lives. We fix it. And How it happens, did you fix it, though? How did you fix that? I mean, I think we didn't go that blonde. We... You know, we you get went. rid of all the hair that's chicle, like you get rid of it. Yeah, th that shit melted. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it was a lot. You like you had to cut it or what? Nah, like not a lot. Thank God she didn't want to go that blonde, but kind of. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. So that's where I was about to pass out because I'm like, this thing is falling out of her hair. Damn. Which of course I took the responsibility. I didn't charge her. I was like, I don't know what happened. I do this day in day out. I don't know what I did today different that I have done every and, single day. And when did it? When did it click that you did something different? So it didn't click till then. Till I had another client a few months mm -hmm. later, and the same thing happened. And I was like, Oh my god, again? Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So then, both times I asked them, Okay, tell me your hair like routine what do you wash your hair with what do you put in your aftercare everything tell me everything this this and that the first one didn't make sense but she told me the second one this this and that and i was like wait the other girl did tell this me the same thing and you did this that's that's it damn and then after google research i'm like oh this chemical does not do well with with bleach, bleach. And this is why the hair is falling off. So after then, I stopped using those bond builders. Uh, Please, girls, if you bleach your hair in any type way, don't use bond builders. Don't use keratin. I'm telling you from experience. So it's keratin. It's a yeah. keratin chemical. Do you know yeah. the brand she's talking about or not? Yeah, I know exactly okay. what she's talking about. And I know they're, I mean, I, I I really know they're under it. a lawsuit, though. They're, I, don't, they're, I don't really use it. Like I was like, using it, though. <laughs> yeah, you were using yeah, it. I was using it for my men. Yeah, yeah. No, but look, I, like, I was using the shampoo personally for me. But I wasn't bleaching my hair. But yeah, the, you're fine. The and, and I know, like, I would know that you only got to put a little bit. I'll put a little bit. And I liked how the shampoo did it. It's magic, right? So... I know people were going crazy with, but, with yeah. those but listen, and all that. It's amazing. It's it's a great product, but from the outside in, if I could have a voice in the industry and you gotta tell make them, your be own like, voice, bitch, keep yeah. it to the professionals. That's a professional <laughs> product. No, keep it. Uh, keep the integrity because the people making these products, they know they're putting this chemical in this bag. But they're so good that they have to be kept in the professional. So you come in into the salon. Get it as a as a professional um, treatment, treatment. Yeah. and then go home. Don't oh, use it. Don't but use it when you home. buy it, use it every day. They're slicking their hair back like, oh, I'm going to use this because it's good for you every single day because it's like gel for them. And mm -hmm. I'm like, girl, you fucked up right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah, the, yeah. Thing, the thing is a lot too that what happens and what I've noticed as well is that because I'm sure you got clients that went somewhere else. They didn't like what it looked like. And then that person didn't educate their client to not be using it all the time. That right. if they need that treatment, that treatment is made for professionals to use on uh, clients. Yes. Not for clients to go out and buy it and put it on themselves and think that they know what they're doing because and they saw their stylist and it just doesn't work out like that. that's where that company messed up. And yes, it's so good that they thought like we're going to sell it because it's doing so good. We're going to make so much money, which yes, you are. But you're doing it the wrong way. Yeah. You can't do that. You got to keep it to the professionals once a month, every two months, three months, whatever it is. 
because we can't use it every day. Now we have the regular person going home and slicking their head back and that stuff. And it's like, you can't. You can't. Hey, Linda, so, so how do you feel about barbers doing bleach now on... Oh. Uh, do you feel like we I, need more... more, more uh, like no. you said, we need to put in more, more work, learn more, or you think no, it's a good no, no. thing? How do you see I it? think it's a good thing because you guys should do that. Why not? Why not? So if, if your loyal client for years comes in and is like, oh, like, I don't know, I'm going here, I want this, or like, for whatever reason. Yeah, what, what I just noticed is that there's a lot of people doing it, and then uh, the client is going through hell trying to get that platinum but it's because the barber saw another barber just slap bleach on top of someone so they're starting to slap bleach and at least for me it's like bleach shouldn't go on the roots right like i don't oh yeah they should they should okay <laughs> you see these no i don't know but, but at least for men like at least i think for men i stay like Look, one listen, finger away no listen uh-huh men I say this in a nice way. Say, it, say. It. Men are like little bitches. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to the the day, when yes. it comes to bleach. Yes, because girls, we do all kinds of shit. That shit burns. That shit. I don't even know why I'm putting myself through that for so many years. But like, we want to be blonde. Um, but men don't understand what women go through, so they're mm. like, "Oh my god, no! I, they can't handle it." And it's like, push through, bro. Like, no, we're no, there. but look, look, I I seen experiences that were like. They're trying to reach that platinum with that guy, and they're already on the third session. No. And that's what I'm saying. It's like... It's cool, but it's you're doing cool. it wrong. You're doing it wrong. I'm saying... I'm not saying that it's a brown thing. Everybody has their own method, but I've I seen it so much that they don't, they over... They toast the, the hair. The mm -hmm. hair is white. It ends up platinum, but it has no texture. It doesn't even flow. It just feels like antennas. Like yeah, it's like, burnt. Like, it's cooked. It's crusty. Yeah. It's cooked. <laughs> So that's at least my view on, on the whole barber's doing. No, I think Please. you guys I think should. They, I, I think, though, honestly, me personally, I feel like they should start taking two, three classes and then start doing it. Yeah. From, Don't just go straight into it. No, but that's how we learn at the end of the yeah. day. But again, maybe if you don't understand it, take a class from someone who does do it and be like, you're not doing it completely wrong. Like, you got yeah. the concept down, but try it this way. Correct. Correct. And, and that's the thing. Like, you learn from other people yeah. certain tricks are like dang i never thought about that let yeah, me yeah. try it you mm -hmm. know so it's not wrong i'm not saying any method is wrong you're not yeah. doing it wrong you're just doing it maybe like in the lazy way mm -hmm. or like just different so to your knowledge can just bleach let's say without the other products can just bleach make hair fall off if you over bleach it hell yeah yeah <laughs> oh, okay it's a chemical, if you so. over bleach it yes but but I Honestly, know it's like the mixture of products and all this that will make it fall off. But can't just bleaching it too much make it fall off? Yeah, bleaching it too much will melt your shit off. Yeah, but leaving it on your hair for a long time, it will start. But remember, like I that. started like back in the day with the señoras taught certain things. And I'm like, oh, I picked up tricks and stuff from even my mom did hair, not oh. professionally, but that's why I think it's normal to me. That's how I grew up, like doing highlights on me and my sister. Oh, yeah. So... That's maybe a big thing why I'm so comfortable with it. And I was so fearless with it. I'd be like, yeah, I could do your haircut in my high school parking lot and bring the kitchen scissors, like the ones you cut chicken with. Like, <laughs> yeah, I got you. And I chopped the shit off and I'd be like, okay, bye. Like, you, yeah. you look cute, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. But no, that's not okay. <laughs> yeah. But I sold myself that early on. Like, I could do it. Let me mm. cut your hair. Because I had that type of haircut that the girls wanted or whatever so i'm like yeah i could do it for you i'd do it to myself and that's not okay but we did it here we are um but the bleach part i just think i don't know um, you can I, I feel like bleach is 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 a product that people see online a lot and and they feel like oh i could do that i could mix this you know it's like <laughs> making pancakes you know we'll mix the, the, the powder <laughs> with the other product and then you slap it on there. But in reality, <laughs> you, you, you got to really, you know, there's warning signs when you buy these things. Um, and yeah, when yeah. you are mixing these you things, you could go into shock. Properly. You know that? Yeah. yeah. Shock for what? For like body shock. like but From the bleach? Yes. From the bleach. I think that yes. happened to me last time. I couldn't move. <laughs> nah, I, I, I did the front part. Oh, my God. I was dying. I was dying, dude. You know why, though? Because I took a shower the night before. No, you can't. I know. I took a shower the night before. So my, my scalp was fresh. And I decided to bleach it. It was the worst. No, so, because I do platinum blondes to the scalp, uh -huh. like, from the scalp down. 
Um, I always say no washing your hair at least two days before. No scratching. Don't wake up and be like, oh, like, I know, mm, no, yeah. don't. Mm. Like, you better not scratch at all. And um, no products, no, no product. nothing, nothing, nothing. Shampoo, p use your fucking soap from like the wa body wash. I don't care. Oh, okay. Nothing. No shampoo, no conditioner. N I mean, yeah, shampoo, conditioner, but like no nothing heavy products. Okay. No okay. keratin, no bond builders, that stuff we talked about. Mm, yeah. Hell no. Okay, okay. Yeah, because there's some clients that I have experience with. Um, some of these guys, they come in and they literally just took a shower. There's like, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't want to smell bad, you know? And like, no. dude, like come in, like we got a shampoo bowl here. I'm going to wash your hair anyway before you leave. So... All those things, I think it all is a big factor in having a great consultation with them before yes. you actually log in the the service. This is what ha has helped me in the past. Like, I'll do a consultation with this, like, quick call over the phone, like, 10 minutes, and I see that you booked for this. But, look, these are the things that you need to meet before you sit in my chair. So, yeah. some of those things is that I practice because when I was in school, when I started doing uh, bleach and color and stuff like that for some of the clients... They would come in and I would think they would have to have their, their hair clean, you know, but no. it, it, I noticed over experience that doing bleach on these on these people with clean, uh, with no sebum and no, none of that yeah, yeah. natural oils, oils in your hair, um, they won't last as long, you nope. know, with the bleach in their hair. They're like, oh, it's burning. And let me know, tell you and all this some stuff. crazy story. I had this kid, I'm gonna call him kid, he's 21, but no. <laughs> um, he came in for his, like, whole bleach out. He wants to be, like, blonde. So I'm like, okay. And he has, like, dark, dark, like, dark hair. I don't even know how to explain it. Like, it's black. It's, like, black, real black. Yeah. And he comes in. He's like, oh, I'm ready, whatever. And I've bleached his hair in the past. So I'm like, cool. We're like, we, I know what I'm working with. And he comes in. We're bleaching. Everything's fine. And then, like, 30 minutes in, he's like, I'm burning. I can't handle this. Like, he's ready to run. Jaleed. And I'm just, like, telling him, stop being a yeah. girl. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> like, we do this all the yeah. time. He's like, no, I can't handle this. Fucked up. I made him sit through it. I'm like, no, you could do this. He was hurting. But because he went surfing in the morning and oh the sand God. against your skin, no matter what you do, even oh if you're God. in the ocean... It exfoliates your skin, which yeah. I had no idea. And he's like, yeah, like, I'm like, so what'd you do today? I know it's early. Oh, nothing. I just went surfing. I'm like, when? This morning, like at 5 a.m.? I'm like, Damn. bro. <laughs> so what happened when you took out the, the bleach? Huh? It, he had blisters. Like, I felt so bad. I was like, listen, if I knew you did all that, I would have known you're not exaggerating. Like, you're literally mm, hurting. You're but I was like, oh, you're just being a little girl. Hey, so what do you do in that case after, like, the blisters come out? You I tell him, go, no. I'm like, go home. Because I've ex I experienced it many times. It happens sometimes. Like, you scratched yeah. or whatever. You showered the, the day before. It's, it's not your fault completely. But, like, yeah, it happens. And it's totally okay. I don't want someone to think, like, oh, I got blisters. Like, no, you're probably sensitive. Mm -hmm. You're a sensitive person. And honestly, the best way I could describe it, if you're lighter skin, especially like super white, mm -hmm. if you're a white girl or whatever, you're going to experience more um, irritation. Irritation. Hey, but usually that 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 um, culture already has blonde hair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so yeah. the the mixture is um, softer, like less harsh. But mm. when you're Hispanic and you got dark brown hair, we're going to blast that shit to the fucking core. Like, we're yeah. going to get you we'll blonde. 40 volume on <laughs> 40 <that> volume. Shit. <laughs> me, queen of 40 volume. Everyone hates me. Damn. But, yes, and if you're not, if you don't have pigment in your skin, yeah, yeah. you're going to fucking is that, burn. Is that mel mel melanin? melanin. No? melanin That's how I say yeah, it. Yeah, the melanin. less me melanin in your skin, the more careful we got to be with you. Yeah, some people are like, "What's melanin?" Yeah, it's you just a pigment. Brown, it's just a pigment in your skin. <laughs> yeah. Pigment in your skin. Pigment in your skin. <laughs> that's interesting. That's really yeah. interesting. So that's um, how I describe it. Hey, so um, going to the business side, do do you have contracts for these girls that come and do their hair? Have you ever gotten sued? Like, oh, no, that's one of my God. biggest fears doing color right now as a man, bro. Yeah. Because I'm getting like people who are like professionals coming and booking this service. 
And I feel like I need a... I already made the contract. You should. I have a contract. Yeah. But the contract just says... For like, everyone, though. And I feel mm. because I've been in the industry way before that we're not used to that. But I do have my contracts for even the girls that we hire. Yeah. Um. There's certain things that obviously you want to run your business by. Um. But as far as clients, I haven't done that because I feel like I'm so old school. Like, I got to... Pick that pace up with okay. the current, um, you know, like with your clients and stuff. Because you could get definitely sued. That's yeah. 100%. This is why we got, um, what is that? The LLC? Oh, no, what? like insurance. Oh, insurance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, yeah, correct. yeah. You, you're insured by your um, insurance or whatever. But, yeah, it's scary. Yeah, I know some businesses have... Um, a pre pre service, they have notes. How you came in, bro? It's like it more like salon related. How you come in? They take notes. She came in like this. Her looks but like. But also this. have everything. Even if you're taking consultation by text, it's right there. Like you can't mm. tell me this and that because I, I've used that so many times. Like look, and I'll like copy and paste and send it back. This is you. This is what you said. Like, you can't bullshit me. Hey, so, uh, so regarding that, when, you know, because right now we were talking before off, off camera that that pink is like pastel pink, right? Mm -hmm. So what I've learned that, and like in doing color, you have to be know your color, your your name of the color because every color is different, yes. right? So whatever a girl tells you, hey, I want a, like a light brown and stuff like that. And at the end, it comes out, you know, it came out like more blondish. <laughs> Right, and because I know sometimes it's hard it to happens. get the set color. It happens color. all the time. Uh huh. So how do you how do you react to all that? Well, you got to be realistic. If I know for a fact I can't. Okay, yesterday, for example, I had a girl that was like, she showed me all these white girls. She's Hispanic with black ass hair. Oh my Naturally, God. naturally, <laughs> like her hair is black as fuck. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, so you like that dirty blonde white girl? Like, look. And she's like, yeah, I love it. And I'm like, okay, all right, cool. I can't give you that. Mm. And then she's like, why? And I'm like, listen, do you see your hair? Black? Yes, I see it. Okay, you see the pictures of the girl you're showing me? White girl, that's her natural hair color. And she's like, okay, I see it. And then she got highlights on her natural color, right? Which is like a dirty blonde with blonde. Okay. She's like, okay, so she gets highlights on her dirty blonde hair. And then she understands and then I'm like, so how do you expect me to give you blonde on your black hair? And she's like, yeah. oh, okay, I see. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but listen, it's not the end of the world. I could mimic that. I could give you brown hair because your hair is black. It'll turn brown, not dirty blonde. But I could give you dirty blonde in a highlight. And then we did it. And then she's like, I trust you. And she's like, I love it. Mm. And I'm like, this is the closest to white girl hair I could give you because <laughs> yeah. you are not a natural white girl. Okay. And she's like, okay, I understand. And I'm like, and you're not going to struggle with the maintenance. Yeah. You'll come back a few months later and it's not going to look fucked up. Yeah. So yeah. how long is your consultation? Do you do it that same day or do you do it the day before? Um, I do it through um, our text or messaging or whatever the case is. And then... Once they're in my chair, we go through it one more time really quick, oh, okay. and then we agree, and then we start. So you ask them for pictures before? Yes. Oh, okay. Because what reference. I'm thinking is not what they're yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Correct. we need to understand. Okay. Um, how, how has business been for you right now, like since the beginning of the year, and what, what, what does the service go for right now in your salon? So the beginning of this year mm -hmm. or the years before? The, the, uh, the, well, how, well from it's been January amazing. To today. It's been amazing since COVID. People have been spending so much money before that. But since this year, 2024, it has slowed down. And I'm like, what is going on? It was scary. Yeah. I had nothing in my books besides scattered appointments. And I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm freaking out. Because okay. I've been booked solid. And I'm like, this is not normal. Like, I was having, like, a heart attack. <laughs> Damn. So <laughs> what did I, you do? How, did, how was your bounce No, back? but honestly, as the days go by, by, people book in last minute. So it went great. It fills up on its own. But seeing you not being pre-booked... Mm. It's hard. It's intimidating. At some yes. point. Like, you're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not good anymore. Yeah. You, you start thinking like, what did I do to this client that he yes. didn't come back? Like, did I, did I yes. offend them or anything? I think at some point, what I, what I've been learning is that every business, 
once you stop marketing as a business, you're going to stop getting clients. You just have to market a lot. Market. And honestly, like even because I feel like I don't market enough. I don't. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I am I don't like I feel like I'm marking my personal life <laughs> before <laughs> anything yeah. because I it's it's an extra job, which you should be doing your marketing for your um, for your actually business. business. Yeah. But I think that is just we're in a recession. Oh, dead on. You think so? Dead on. You Hell, think? Yeah. what? You don't see it? I feel like we we already we've been in it. We've been, but yeah. I think like this year it hit hard. Oh, because like people are really people are sending their flyers. Like, when have you seen flyers at your door? Yeah, like that's crazy. But but, but it's also like right now people are getting paid more. Um, everything's going. Inf obviously, inflation is happening. Um, but these stores are charging more money. People are paying more for gas and they're still traveling though but people don't want to get their hair done yeah like yeah. that's a luxury at the end this of the day it's a luxury yeah correct, correct and it's like either you were born having that type of like you know type of like what do you call it lifestyle like lifestyle, lifestyle where oh your mom got her hair done or your mom's like oh hell no I'm not getting that shit done like I'm not yeah. spending this much or you grew up like, yeah, that's normal. Like, I'm going to spend that. And you are going to spend that no matter if you're, like, dying. You know? Yeah. I think there's always going to be those people, though, that want to keep doing their hair. Oh, yeah. That's, gotta, why, that's why we don't go out of business. Yeah, we don't go to, <laughs> yeah. yeah, correct. correct. Yeah. Now, um, I, I don't... Do you let politics affect your whole business? Oh, and your hell personal? no. Because nah? like, you just no. were talking about recession, so you were just like... Well, yeah, because it's it's there. Like, yeah, it's there. You, it you, affects you can't, us. You can't mistake it for anything else. People are not spending. People are careful. People are, like, booking their... Even if they're booking, they're booking longer. They're going an extra oh, month an extra or month two months. It, yeah. And you're like, where have you been? You come every yeah. three weeks. So, but, but have you been raising your prices or no? I struggle with that. Because uh, that happened to me when I started raising my prices. People, like, instead of coming twice a month, they're like, I'm going to come every month. <laughs> but now. how I see it, people are like, oh, I should raise my prices. And I'm like, yeah, you should a little bit, but not so much where people are going to wait a whole six months or a year to come back. You should, but not so crazy. So you don't lose that client to come back in their regular time. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. You, you got to know when to go uh, up in your prices. Yeah, and how much. Like, at the end of the day, you can't feel like you're this celebrity. Like, no one's going to come to you. Yeah. N not but, the regular person. So how do you feel that is in your industry right now? You think it's congested? You think the prices are too high? You think you're not charging the right price? I think prices are high. Yeah. Definitely. From what, other What does, stylists? like, a plan them go for right now? Oh. With like the average. And how oh, long does it take? A lot. I am fast. I do it in four hours. A planner? On, four, on maximum five. Damn. I'm, I'm really fast. So I charge hourly. I charge, oh, you charge a hourly. certain okay. amount hourly. And I don't think it's crazy, but it's it's fair, which yeah. is my type of work. If um I'm do doing certain things, I'm going to be fair. I'm so, not trying to milk you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what do you do? Two clients per day? I do, do two that? big clients and everything in between. I, I squeeze them in. Yeah. Like haircutting. And yeah, haircuts oh, okay. and um, touch-ups, which is fast. Okay, okay. Sounds yeah. good. So it works. What's a big client for you? Like, to me, I'm thinking somebody that yeah. comes in full black hair and has to be there the whole five hours because they want to go platinum. So that is like a that. big ticket. That, I call those the big ticket clients. Like, I'm going to cater to you. What do you want? <laughs> what do you want from the beginning to end? Would like, you, yeah. We're do you, do do you buy him lunch sometimes or no? <laughs> no. Not, <laughs> no. I don't got time for that. lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you have to buy you lunch. <laughs> no, but like, you come prepared and you, you know, you, whatever they need, we, we got it. But yeah. I'm so fast, you're not going to starve. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Do you stick to clients because they're good tippers or they pay good and they always want that big ticket, but they're so difficult to work with? Like they no. want this specific no. thing. You just like, Hell no. you fire them. My mental health, going to work, I love what I do so fucking much. And I connect with my clients. We're like, we're like, we're, we're, we're like friends. I will not, never see you outside of work, but. When we sit there and connect, I'm like, how are you? What happened last time? Are you okay? We connect. And yeah. 
I mean, not to be fucked up, but they swear we're friends. But like, I, we're not friends, friends. Yeah. But we connect. Your acquaintances. A different, yes, <laughs> and we love each other. They, I hook them up on my end through service. I'll, I'll add in like a treatment. I'll add in a haircut for free. Like, I won't even question it. I'll just do my thing, right? Yeah. You don't even know what's going on, but um, yeah, that's how we. I feel like take care of of each other. Yeah, um, regarding your mental health, when when you go and you service these clients, right? Because you're servicing women, I could just imagine the conversations you guys are having, or <laughs> or they're telling you about your their problems and they're getting cheated on, or they're about to lose the house. How how much does that carry? How, how, what's the toll it carries in your mind? Because um, I know you leave sometimes too. You might leave like worried about your client. You're like, damn, did you go? They're just going through it, like. Well, I have learned to leave work at work and mm. don't carry stuff home because there's nothing you could do. Yeah. If you carry your shit home, you're going to be a disaster. You're going to give yeah. your wife, your partner attitude. You're going to be frustrated and be like, don't talk to me. You can't do that. Yeah. First off, therapy from your clients is not part of the job. It, it comes with it. it comes and we, with it. we have to deal with it. And because I feel like if you have a good personality and you're welcoming, they're going to tell you everything. Yeah. But that's not your job. Mm. So even if you get a whole paragraph at home, oh, he did, I ignore it. I'm like, I'm sorry, we're we're out of the chair. Damn. I can't do more. I can't help you. And I'll reply when I reply and we keep it there. And they don't take it personal at all. It's, I, they, I feel like they know it's a lot more. And yeah. that's it. How is it with you working with, um, so I think you said your family member works with you? My sister, Your yes. sister works did you, with you? You taught, did you teach her? I didn't teach her. No, she's huh? on what her own. What is she own. doing? She she's doing hair? Eyelashes. Eyelashes. Okay, oh. so you have eyelash and then you said nails. nails. So she's nails? doing nails too. You got another no, no, tech for nails. No, no, that's a different girl. Oh, okay. Damn. Yeah. Hey, um, when I was growing up. My, they told me to draw my my business plan or my dream, bro. Oh, my God. I, I just wanna, but I want to show you what it is. Like, it's just like, imagine a spot like this, but in that corner, bro, There's there was a nail shop. I drew it. I have it. It's a nail shop, and then it's a Cosmo, and then a barber shop, and I was going to do, a, what is it, esthetician? Or yeah, facials. It, facials and, all, and one whole thing, but I was like, damn, I'll be tight where like a whole family could come. That's and my they dream, go get, actually. Yeah, bro, if I show, so I could cool. draw it out. In the middle, there's like a playground. Like at that time, I had to draw around like a taquero. And <laughs> like it's servicing everyone, bro, because you could, I would always find this problem mm -hmm. where fa like the dad comes to do the hair and the whole family comes. But they don't, the family doesn't know what to do. They just waiting. Mm -hmm. But imagine the girl's like, hey, you can go do your hair. I'm going to do my nails. I'm going to do my nails here. Or <laughs> while you're waiting for me, the kids are playing, yeah. you're eating food. That was my yeah. whole like dream yeah. and stuff. But uh, now that you have it like that, that's cool. So it's like a one-stop yes, shop for Yes, and for we all share clients. Like, they'll be like, oh, can I come in this time? Because I have an appointment with your sister at this time. And I'm like, wait, hold on. Can you come at this time? We'll make it work. And they hop literally from the chair to the bed, to the bed, to the chair. Damn. It's cool. Yeah. Hey, so sometimes they're wasting like a thousand dollars in one day. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I'm going to start my own. I'm <laughs> not joking. Yeah, like, they different. I mean, not, not that I profit from all of yeah, it no, but like no. everyone's getting everyone gets the piece. their peace and that's peace. to me seeing my co-worker balling i'm like bitch let's go yeah, yeah keep yeah. going yeah that's true yeah that's awesome so uh did you teach your sister i mean did you you feel like you inspire your teacher your sister to do eyelashes no but what happened was because we grew up around it i'll be like you do my highlights you do mine you do my nails i'll do yours so we grew up we're a year and a half apart okay so we played with these things we're girls like we're girls girls like yeah, yeah, yeah. we want everything like from fashion i remember to we needed everything i feel bad for my mom but we were that type of girl. So we, we would tell each other, do this on me. And my mom would be pissed because she did hair and we would get her bleach. And like, if you do it, we get in trouble. We'd get in trouble together, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but why wouldn't you ask your mom to do your hair? Because she, she said no. To, she she said I couldn't write, be yeah. blonde, that I was like dark as like, shit. like, no, you can't be blonde at 15. <laughs> so you're 15 yeah. years old. Dude. <laughs> that was her excuse. She's yeah. like, oh, you're too dark. That doesn't go oh, good. Uh -huh. And then my sister's the light one. So she's like... 
sixth grade, full bomb blonde. I was crying. I was like, Damn. I want that. So yeah. I always tell my mom, I remember you gave her full highlights at like 12 years old and I couldn't have them. Oh, you were hating. Yeah, yeah, you were mad. You were mad. Oh. I was so heartbroken. Like, yeah. you don't understand. That was my first, like, I was crying. But I want to be blonde. Like, Britney Spears was my idol back then. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we'd fight together. She was Christina Aguilar and I was Britney <laughs> Spears. And we'd, like, hit each other and be like, I want your CD. I want your CD. And it was a whole dilemma. So how, how important was your family and your friends, like, for you to get here where you're at? Um, I mean, not a problem, but my parents were like, that's not a career. Oh. That's where I went back to college because I was so young. I was barely 19. I was barely 19. They're like, mm -mm, go back to college. And I was like, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. So I went back to college, dropped out like twice by the time I was 24. I had dropped so twice. So were you still out. doing hair while you yeah. were in college? Okay. So because I was 19 and I finished cosmetology since I was 18 to 19, I went back to college because that was not a career. And I was like, fine. You know, you're a kid. You're like, I'll do whatever you want. And well, you say you finished cosmetology, so you had your license already. 19 years old. Oh, you had your license? Yeah. Oh, damn. I was young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, That's very fire. young. That's what I'm saying. People don't believe me that I've been doing hair for so long because I'm technically young But I can't them. believe you actually ended up going, even trying out college after having your license. Oh, I cried. And even cosmetology, I threw a tantrum. I don't want to go. I would cry. And my mom's like, you fucking better go. You better finish it. Finish it. What you started, you better finish. And I'd be like, having a whole tantrum. And she's so, like, no. So what made you drop off college and be like, all right, I'm leaving this and I'm going straight to do hair? Um, I tried till I was like 24, 25. And I was like, I'm done. Like, I can't. I've been through... What was it? The, the assignments? The work? The, the school environment? <laughs> you really want to know? You're oh, yeah. stupid. I want to know. I want to know, no, I wanna know um, the truth. Math. Math? Oh. I'm amazing. I could write you a book. I could read. I could write you a whole whatever... An essay. Like, nothing. Like, I, I don't know how I think out of my ass and type. Yeah. But math? Bro. I'm <laughs> dumb as shit. No. It is in business. Because I, 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 I took business... You go up to, uh, they call it business calculus. It's still right below, but that thing was confusing. No, I couldn't pass algebra. Oh, pass, oh my I, God. The so moment you, uh, I was like, step number two, I was thinking about why the fuck is the wall <laughs> brown or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, fuck, I'm, I have to pay attention to yeah, this yeah, thing. Yeah. But I was thinking about why. Like, why is you, the, why yeah. are we in class right now? <laughs> yeah. Indoctrination and yeah. all that. No, I yeah. get it. Because... Uh, you know, during college, I there was a point where I'm two years in. My my mom was my mom and my dad are helping me to go through college, and I get a ticket <laughs> while cutting hair. So I'm like, I should probably just go get my license. But I was so afraid to to quit on college. But because it, they tell you that they tell yeah. you you're my parents told me you're nothing if you don't become a doctor, a lawyer, a uh, whatever. And yeah. I was like, dude, I knew in my heart I was like I would never. I would never become that. No. Yeah. No, I was more afraid just because my parents have already supported me. They put effort in it. They gave me money. And I was like, imagine if I just tell them I'm going to give up. I'm like, they're going to yeah, kill me. Yeah, that's the gonna fear in you. Yeah, but once I finished college, I remember like I finished college. I, I told my mom, here's my diploma. I told her, I'm sorry, but I'm going to continue cutting hair. And they didn't react. I thought they were going to be like, no. What? They were just like, okay. Okay, it's but listen. Who do you know that is more successful than you? Honestly. Uh, Maybe I, one or two, but who? I, I do know a couple people. Okay, couple? Couple, not a lot. Two, three, four? Yeah, two, three, four, not a lot. Same. At my age, at my age too. I, I don't. Nope, I don't yeah. know many people that have even completed a college who are... I Running don't, their own business? Yeah, nobody. Disney. It's like you're one in the rough. Yeah, yeah, we're breaking all this, uh, this culture. So how are you going to tell me you're doing hair, doing something artsy, you're not successful? Yeah. So what are you doing that is better than me? Correct, correct. Let's see, blow my mind, because I don't know. Yeah, and, and as I started growing up, I started, like, out, you know, like, I like talking to people, so I'll talk to the people around me, like, hey, what are you doing? Uh, I'm just right here chilling, working here, and I'm like, for real, that's it? Like, that's so unattractive. Like, yeah, and, and I was just like, <laughs> so at some point, I'm like, 
damn, nobody's doing shit around here. Like, everybody's just living through life, not yeah. even trying to be successful. Like, not these even are my high more. school friends. Yeah, like, these are people I no, used to want to hang out with people all people older than me, too, bro. I'm talking about, like, 34 years old. Four, four, four. Hey, yes. um, what, what have you done? Oh, I've been working in this job 18 years. Damn, 18 years? And you never want to start a business? Nah, I'm cool right here. So, in my mind, I don't understand how everyone doesn't want to, like, start their own business. I don't get why, it. Why don't you think I don't they, get it. Because I'm like, okay, you're in construction. And, like, I met some guy. And I was like, okay, whatever. Like, you're cool. I'm like, he's in construction. I'm like, so what does it take to start your own business? And he's like, what? I'm like, how did you not think about yeah, having you, your own construction like business? Like, you haven't asked yourself this company, question? Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. You haven't asked yourself these questions. Yeah. You know? Like, it blows my mind. Yeah. How, do, how? Because I'd be thinking, like, okay, I'm in this business. How do I start my own? Yeah, yeah, Is yeah. Is that yeah. normal? No. Am I not normal? Yeah, no. I think we all had that. <laughs> I think we all had that idea. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. But look, I met some people that came from like their their country to to United States, and they they learned like I, I know some guy. He learned how to do grass, artificial grass. He was working for a company in one year, bro. After one year, he's like, I'm doing my own business. Yeah. And I was just like, Damn. and now he has his own business, yeah. running it, bro. And in one year, and people who have been doing that for ten years have never done what he's done. But I always with. say this: there's always two types of people in this world. The ones that are just there to follow or the ones that are going to lead mm. who are you yeah and if you're going to lead you're going to be judged you're going to be talked about you're going to be everything and it's okay with me go ahead yeah talk your shit yeah i, I always I, I have this acronym that i heard in the podcast it's called opo it's just other people's opinions like don't care about it yeah just stop, at the stop. end of the day their opinions yeah are they you no they're no not. not at all yeah Correct. Okay, is there anything you want to talk about or bring yeah, up? Yeah, actually, we... um, so I know that you said something about, you know, it was slowing down for me. It was a little scary and stuff like that. And you also mentioned about behind the chair and how can you get into that stuff. What are some of the things that are you're going to focus on this year to get you to up your prices, get you more book, get new clientele, or actually go out to these events to shake these people's hands so you can be out there and probably be that candidate to win the Behind the Share Show award or anything like that or put you onto a brand and you be an ambassador for something like that. Is that something in your taste or you're kind of comfortable where you're at, like running your business? Are you more focused for your business to grow? Or you actually want to be that type of stylist that is that is out there, that is known, that is getting the views uh, on their TikTok, that is getting the views on their, fo on their following, of upping their following. Is that something that interests you right now? Because there's a lot of people in the industry right now that are heading towards that direction and don't have 15 years under their belt, you know? Well, as simple as I could answer that question is like, I don't thrive to have that recognition because I know what I could do and I what I could attract as a stylist and um, I am comfortable, but do I want to stay in that comfortable state? Maybe I need a little push. Maybe I need a little something. But I personally don't thrive off of that attention. I don't want to mm. be famous. I don't want that constant. I feel like I already get that type of like, what do you call it? Like appreciation, a attention, attention where I'm like, uh. leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> you get I that attention be, in real life. Yes, which I want to be left alone sometimes. And sometimes I'm like, I'm like, okay, let's get back on it. And I feel like I go in, I get all this attention, and, and then I go back into my show because I can't handle it. It's too much. So yeah. do I want it? No, I want to live a private life. But I know if I head towards that direction, I could 1,000% pr pursue it and achieve it. I know it. I know it. Yeah. But do I want that? I don't mm. know. I can't tell you if I want that type so what, of attention. So what do you want, though? What do, where, where do you... How, I just want to you... create, and I want to do my art, and I just... I feel like I cater. I call my um, loyal clients my little celebrities, because oh, they're so they're, bougie. They're the celebrities, They're yeah. like the real estate agents that, you know, they cater to a lot of people in the community. They... The lawyer girls, the the few doctors and it's like they do their part like why yeah. would I wh why would they want that much more attention mm. they don't and I personally feel like overwhelmed with when I'm I already feel overwhelmed and I'm nobody like I'm I'm nothing yeah imagine more I'm like I can't do it I, I can't and I would rather live a private life even though I'm so outspoken at the end of the day and I'm so 
um, expressive. I know I am. Yeah. And I know I put myself out there sometimes. But the moment I say one word, oh, I'm like, I'm off the internet. Yeah. Because I feel like I can't, I, I can't be too much because I do get that flow in and I, I just can't handle it. Yeah, sometimes it, it could be really overwhelming trying to yeah. live up to that life. And then you your know? personal life and it's like, wh what do I want? Yeah. I truly would want a private life. Yeah, for me, um, you make it seem like you want a private life where you're actually enjoying success every day, and you're not doing it for like the Instagram. Oh, I am. You're mm -hmm. not doing it for the. That's as what long I feel. As you're, you're eating well. You're having the right friends. Your family's good. You get to buy your shoes, your nails, and I, I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you get yeah. me. Like you don't, you don't. I always tell people like people. Not everyone has to know how much work you put in. You no, know? and I it's don't just to, care. To to each his own. You yeah. know. It's just it, I do agree with Ko that now I feel like people like you who have 15 years in the game. You could you could actually take your brand further using social media and using all these resources and that there is out there. I'll always give I I give this example. Do you see these multimillionaires with the fucking billboard? No. Do never. you see these wealthy men with their face on a whatever? No, they're working behind other people silently. They're like balling. Yeah. Nobody knows about them. That is true. That's me. I don't mm. want that extra. No, I don't want it. Yeah, they say the Lamborghini doesn't advertise to people sitting down <laughs> yeah. in the in the couch. In the couch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. And do they make? Yeah, they're. they're do a they big make company. advertisements for the regular person? No, no, they don't. Exactly. They don't. So pick your struggle. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. You always gotta pick um, your struggle. So I feel like I'm I'm different in that sense. Like yes, I I feel like I am very open and expressive, and I do put myself out there because mm -hmm. that's who I am. But I feel like if I really like if I would put my effort into being that person oh no like i feel like i'd be overwhelmed yeah do you feel like you have fans like in disguise or fans that probably like stylists no. that maybe no. like really? like like yo i want to be like her like no, her lifestyle but is so you know cool when you and, notice like, a certain people copying you but you don't want to say anything but you're like am i crazy yeah that I, type of thing but like i no i don't want to think like that What's your educational part on this? Like, what's your take on that? Do you do you have any hunger to teach people to do things the way that you do them, and you know, don't have to go through all those um, all the hard work? And you can kind of teach them, just like you you mentioned earlier in the cast, that you know somebody took you under their wing and taught yeah. you what to do, and you saw what not to do from that person. You feel like you have it in you for someone to learn those type of things from you? So I feel like I'm that type of boss now. I'm like, let's go. I'm going to teach you everything, ask the questions, be here. But the problem is they don't want to be here. They want mm. their freedom. They want to, you know, like, so that's hard. And I'm like, how are you going to take that for granted? Yeah. Which blows my mind. But it takes a certain person that wants to be successful, which was, I was probably one in the big group. Yeah, one in the, one in the million, yeah. maybe. And also... Um, not to like, I don't want to say too much, but I really, say it. <laughs> but I really want to teach in the future. If I could uh, get a team, like, you know, like let's, let's What teach. exactly do you want to focus on teaching? Like just cutting hair, how to be a successful hairstylist, no, how to, how to be run a, the business, the chemical, the, the chemical, chemical part, part, because mixing and all that tell stuff. Tell me who does not struggle with the chemical, the chemistry part. That's yeah. the scariest shit That's in the, the world. Shit, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I could say that for barbering. Like, I don't think I'm that great of a barber to say like no like i do basic shit yeah but if i could if i could take a class from a barber and be like yes i'm gonna go because i need to sharpen my skills i as a stylist because i'm in the industry and i do it i'm gonna go learn more yeah and if you could get other stylists that want to learn a lot more say like in my case color color correction blonding all of that here I am to teach you and actually be, um, you know how it's intimidating to do these things? I don't know about you guys, but yeah. it is scary. Yeah, to teach. If it I is. tell you right now, I'll do a platinum blonde, you're going to be like, fuck. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Let's go. <laughs> yeah, but if I could teach that, I really want to teach. I think that's my next calling after the salon mm -hmm. and business owner. I think I'm going to go that route. Uh, honestly, uh, there's two sh things I want to share about you teaching. Um, I w remember Jazz Beauty, Jazz, yeah, Beauty, Jazz Beauty Expo. Okay, I went to this Jazz Beauty Expo, right? And I remember I walk in, I look to my left, barbers, right? Empty, not empty, but there's people, people. I look to my right, 
all beauty cosmos is packed i'm like mm. oh damn this industry is big right uh the 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 se- the second thing was uh i noticed that when it comes to i went to this uh class in k-town it was called ssr and we it was a beauty and they were teaching us how to do balayage bal- 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 yeah, bal- yeah. bal- and um perms uh but i feel like the people that were teaching uh, there's only a few educators in the industry. There's not a lot. Like everybody was so. I don't know if you know someone named Color by Carlos. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. So he was giving the class. He was giving the class, and I was there. But I was just like, there's not a lot of educators right here. Everyone that I was talking to. But just- remember, like you got to keep in mind, there's not a lot. I think, from my perspective, is because the older generation, which I grew up with, they're gone, bro. Like. They're old. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're on their way out. Honestly, it's such a hard um, business on your body. Like these señoras are standing on their feet all day. They're, do you swear they want to be educators? Yeah, no, and don't. then I'm that middle class where I'm just like, okay, I'm not that old, but I'm not that young. Like right now, the youngsters. Mm-hmm. So maybe I should educate because they never did. Yeah. They just worked. Yeah. Yeah. And then the younger, what are the younger generation gonna teach us besides what they see online no. like i have that knowledge from the older and from the young i understand both yeah you're in the understand. middle understand and you know what i what, what i came to understand that you know how in high school there's always a freshman class yeah. there's always new ninth graders right yeah. so in your industry guess what every year there's a new freshman class that who, who people who are barely starting so that's when i was teaching barbers i was like I didn't, i'm not even gonna focus on people like KO that I already, I'm not going to try to sell him my KO my class. He's already an expert. He knows. He has done. I'm going to focus on the on the freshmen, on the new people. Yeah. And if you focus on them, which there's always going to be a market for them. Which always. they're scared and yeah, they're, they're scared. eager to learn. They're eager to learn. Yeah. So just target them once you start your education. I think education is a great uh, route for everyone. I, yeah, really, I think you'll love it. I've been thinking about it for so long, but it's like, how do I get started? Who is my crowd? I can Who even cares? A, yeah, like, yeah, we'll give you a right idea, now. Like, well, what helped me, because I, I taught color too, you know, I taught how to bleach hair for men, for barbers that wanted to do it, the basic stuff. I may not be as great as you. You did a right? whole tour though. You so did, right? I did a whole I know, tour okay. and I did yeah. all that stuff. And I just built the stage for myself and I sold it and I didn't even imagine, I didn't even know how many people were going to come to my class. And even if one or three or 15 people would come or only the barbers from that barbershop where we were doing the class, it made me feel right and it got me ready. And it was like me putting my reps in so yeah. that when I'm, four or five classes in and there's 20 people actually trying to learn from me. Now I know what to say. I already did all the five fucks and all that stuff with the small classes and stuff. But what actually pushed me is taking a class and seeing how horrible the class was and how much better I can make it. I could see that. You know, so I go into a class get what I can and get what not to do from that class and then bring out my own curriculum and bring it out and let the people know what I can do so I feel like that's so inspiring, that you know, hearing that from you. I think you just blew my mind. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I think that 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 that's something that helped me was. I learned that you're always going to be a student, no matter how many years you have Hell under yeah. your belt. Like you got to have that mentality of always being a student and eager to learn because this new generation, they're going in hard. Like, yeah, yeah they want to hurry up and charge 350. Yeah, they want to cut corners and all that stuff. But their hunger is at an all-time high that they want to overstep the people that put in and work. You yeah. know, they're that hungry. Yeah. They're that hungry. And then we can't blame them for that. We want the new generation to be evolving, like not to come from where we came from. We want them to come from a way hunger perspective so that way they can tackle things a little yeah, bit different. Let's just start a class right now. <laughs> <laughs> start a class. Because look, I'm inspired. Honestly, just throw it. Like uh, what I like about KO was that he threw free classes, right? And people were just coming. That's how you build audience. You remember your first question was, how do you build audience? Throw free classes. I did free classes. Free people come then you get your niche right yeah. the second key thing that i think he said is go to a class because that's what happened to me i went to a poppy blends class in florida i took the class he showed me his powerpoint i kept the powerpoint he actually sent it to me i just when i threw my first class i literally copied his class so the best way is you go to a class structure it take notes on how they structure it 
Mm-hmm. Then you throw your own class. Yeah, because you're in that. Think about about it. Everybody in there is 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 going to that class to learn how that person is doing hair. But you're going in there with a different mentality of going like, okay, I'm gonna take these gems. I'm gonna put this to, to the <laughs> side. I'm gonna take these notes. And you know, you're going in there for a full full tour. You may know even better. To do, to do the hair better than the person that's giving the class. Yeah. But that person may have a lot more knowledge in how to educate, which exactly. is a whole different ballpark. It's, it's a, a whole different it's ballpark. It's a whole you know? different thing. Yeah. But those things, things like that really open your mind. And and when you're in that class, use it to the best of your ability, like network, connect with people that are students there that may be an attendee at your class. You know what's crazy? That some people have the ability to sell a rock. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I feel like... I'm that person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I feel it's like, like listen, that. But not uh-huh. not to say it as a like arrogant way. I just tell him why. Like, look, listen, this rock, this, this, and that. Like, and because it's not made up, like I'm telling yeah. them facts, right? Yeah. And they listen to you because they trust you. Yeah. And because I have that trust in my clients, I feel like I could sell rocks at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I, I'm pretty sure you sell products to your clients at the end. Yeah. Right? I, I remember when I started doing that. I swear, they're like, hey, why do you use that? Oh, look, bro, this one's more mad. Like, you know how this hair, you want it to look dry? <laughs> this one's going to give you the, the look that you want. Yeah. Bro, I'll take it. Yeah. And, and I swear, like, I, you get better and get yeah. better by the beginning. I, I was probably lying to them. Like, oh I don't know God. anything about the product. <laughs> Can I say about <laughs> yeah, lying, yeah. but like not lying? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so in the beginning when I started my whole hair journey which i didn't even know i was like i was a child and i ran with it i was like yeah i'm a hairstylist without i just thought it was normal to call myself a hairstylist Mm. just because i was in hair school yeah but i i ran with it which is super crazy to think now i'm like why was i saying that like i don't even know you gotta know anything about it i was just in school for it i think it was uh it was like we were delusional at the moment (laughs) but we knew we were gonna get there we knew we were gonna get there but the thing is that People ask me, what's the best advice you could give someone in the hair industry? And they're mad about this well, advice, yeah. but it worked for me. I'm like, fake it till, till you make, make it. it. Yeah. And they're like, that's terrible advice. Why would you fake anything? I'm like, I faked it. Yeah. Can you do this? Yeah, but I had no idea what, I, I didn't know how to do it. And I would say yes to anything because I knew my potential deep down, I will figure it out. Yeah. I knew, I don't know, but I, I, I knew I was going to do it. Yeah, I agree with the whole fake it till you make it. Just don't fake it forever. No, I know. <laughs> you know, I know. But some people were like, we all faked it in the beginning. Now you said, they'll come. Can you do this design? Yeah, I'll do it. Uh, hey, can you do this? Uh, yeah, I'll do it. we didn't even know how to do it. I was like, yeah. this is my first time I'm going to yeah. do this ever. And they don't know, but we were faking it, you know? I mean, you look the part. All, you play you the, better you know? look. At least the part. Yeah. yeah. If you look all like fodong and ugly and shit, like I'm not gonna trust you. Yeah, correct. Like you correct. better at least look at like the stylist and you the better cu- the customer speak. service, yes. and everything. You 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 convince yes. the client that you know to yeah. do exactly what. They so want. like what I like to see, what I see a lot too is us in the barbershop, right? Like I'm not a big fan of barbers that come to the barbershop and flip flops or just like mm. chill clothes and stuff. Because you get a client, you come in, and you look like that. It's like, how is this person going to make me look? Look what he looks like. How is this person going to make me look good? Like, so I feel like first impressions is a big thing. Like, if it's a new client and you're not done up or nothing like that, it's just like, you're already letting them down. Okay, thank you for saying that because I feel like (laughs) I've been judged towards that. And I've told, like, the girls, hey, like, I get it. We all have a rough week, night, whatever. We have a rough morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at least... If you're not going to dress right, do your makeup. If you're not going to do your makeup, dress do your hair, right. Do yeah. Your hair, yeah. One, One or pick the, other. the struggle. <laughs> and they're like, oh my God, this and that. And I'm like, who's going to trust you if you're looking all greasy and ugly yeah. and like, you know, I don't want her to do my hair. Can we get somebody else? Yeah. You know? That is so true. I've gotten um, like backlash from that, from, from saying, hey, can you. From your own uh, employees that you yes. have working there. But sometimes like, you got to be the leader. I feel like you're a great leader, you know? So when you being a great leader and getting to work the way that you do and handling hair the way that you do, even your work ethic, like like you can't have everything everywhere. Like if you are a little bit more organized and stuff like that, and people see that like, damn, like I know it's hard to but do hair But people already. don't have work ethic. Yeah, some people just don't. Some people just don't. They think they, they're running late and they're just going to do this. And that's and okay every you know? day. 
Yeah. That's not okay. Yeah, yeah. every day is it's not, not okay. Not, yeah. It's not. You have to set a standard for... And be the leader so that they can be like, you know what? She's serious about her stuff. And then like, what type of clientele do you want to attract? Broke, yeah. pe broke people? Yeah. People that look like you and flip-flops yeah. and chanclas and People who are whatever. late all the time. Yeah, yeah you don't. You want to be on top of it. You want to... We want the professionals that got to go to work at this time and you got to get them out at this time yeah. because they're paying you. Yeah. I, yeah. I tell people, I think we're all in the, in the point of career where we choose our client. Oh, we're we're yeah. not just letting anyone Thank be our God. client. Like we <laughs> yeah. choose them. Like I, I like choose. I like working with corporate people, with lawyers. Yeah. I, I like people who book. I have a client that books. I actually the the, the co-owner of this uh, this studio. He books his haircuts for the next two months already. Yeah. And I love that because he knows he's going to Mexico here. He's going here. And you know you gotta be he, here. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I love that. And, and I you know you got that money that month. Yeah, regardless. You know, yeah, yeah, regardless. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're like, your security deposit. Yeah. Who doesn't want that? Correct. Yeah. Correct. So I, I like those clients. I'm, and when I'm those clients come in, it's like it's the best. They're best. Like they come in, you're ready for them, they're ready for you. And it just flows out smooth. Yeah. And then you the day up and boom. You bond with them. You're yeah, like, all yeah. right, what's this trip for? And they're like, oh, I'm doing this. I'm like, damn, I wish I was in your shoes. Nah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Linda, look, we're getting to the end of, of this uh, session, of this episode. Uh, before we, we wrap it up, is there anything you want to share, any message you want to share with the audience, with your followers, with the industry overall? What's something that has been like, bugging you lately or like something you just want to something you just want to express you know you say you're, you're an expressive person what's something that that you just want to let the world know right now i mean not that i want to let anybody know but don't be the type of person that expects anything hustle dude like fucking put your shit into what you want don't expect anyone to give you anything if you expect people to give you everything i'm sorry you're gonna fail hmm. so hustle put yourself out there. Right, right now that you were saying about hustle i want to ask you a particular question because you don't see a lot of ladies doing business right now right so how did you get that mindset of hustling because, i don't fucking know i think look <laughs> tell, tell me tell me not but i was asking this guy yesterday i was at, you you correct me do you think men are more energetic than than women or or because not, but look, right now that you're telling me that you're hustling I, I'm kind of noticing now I might be wrong because there is girls who hustle. They wake up every morning. They go to sleep late. Yeah, they're they wake like, up. come on, bro. Yeah, like, get the fuck out. They're, they're like, up and down. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did you get that mindset? I don't know. Honestly, I, that's what I'm saying. There's two people, two types of people in this world. The ones that are just watchers and in the back scene and like they're going to follow are the leaders. Who are you? Mm, the leader. The leader. Mm -hmm. the leader, absolutely. And I'd rather hang out with a group of leaders because I'm going to learn from you, you and you, from other stuff that I want to do. You're not a competition to me. Yeah. Just because you're leading the way and you're like, oh, you're better than me. You're not, we're not better than each other. Yeah. You might do better than me. Yes. And I, and I recognize that, but I want to learn from you. You think I want to learn from the loser who's sitting in the bag and be like, uh, what, where are you taking me? What yeah. are you doing for me? I don't, I don't want that. Yeah. And I, that's with my personal circle, like my friends. My close friends, you think they're all losers? No, sir. no, no. No, you I, pick and choose who you want to be around and yeah. who you give your time to. I, I don't. Uh, yeah, I think my career changed once I stopped competing with people, especially like yeah. you said. If you if you're small circle, you're competing. I think you're in the wrong circle. Yeah. Like in the wrong circle. You're, you're supposed to be helping each other out, give out information now. Like, but so I, I love that what you said. Like, we're not even competing with each other. Like, no, you might be further on in your journey than me. But I want to tag along. I want to help you. But I could you. learn from you. Yeah, And you yeah. could learn from me. And then, honestly, if you have a team that's doing well, imagine them together. Mm. Multi-millionaires together. Yeah. Bitch, let's go fly out to where the fuck, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Together. Should we go in your private jet or my private jet? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so that's dope. That's dope. Linda, what what are your your uh, goals for twenty twenty four? We'll finish off with that, and then we'll goals. I think just to grow a strong, strong team, people that want to work, because that's the struggle right now. If you don't want to work, I don't know what to tell you. Do you enjoy being a leader? You enjoy? Hell it? yeah! Yeah, you enjoy. <laughs> yeah. That's, awesome. that's awesome. I can't see myself doing anything else, honestly. Yeah. Because I I I always say this as a joke, but I think it's true true if i had to quit whatever i'm doing now and work from a nine to five i'd be fired for sure 
Because mm, I don't know that type of structure. I've never had a regular job. Yeah. So I know for a fact, one way or another, and be like, girl, go home. Yeah. You, you know, know, you know uh, people that don't want to be uh, controlled, like, which is all of us. If you're a barber, <laughs> stylist, small business owner, you hated that nine to five rules. They say that yeah. we're like the rebels. But yeah. deep down, we know I we love just. It. We just yeah, I love being a rebel. I don't want call me what you want to call. Yeah, me. and I don't know I'm about like hair hair school when you guys were like doing your hours at school. Did you not feel like you fit in? Like this is this is my tribe. This is my people. <laughs> yeah. Did you not? Yeah, Am we I think crazy? alike. No, no, no. for yeah, sure. You yeah. connect with these everyone's people. Everyone's tatted. Everyone's expressive. You're like, <gasps> okay. I they were all like... rebels in this room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not weird. <laughs> Okay, so um, other than that, uh, what what um, what's something you want to accomplish this year that you're like, uh, you want to be clear on it and you're like, okay, by this time, if it's a vacation. I want to be a millionaire. You want to be a millionaire by the end of the year? <laughs> we'll hold on to that for like five years. <laughs> no, seriously, yeah. I feel like I'm delusional, but I believe it so no. much that I'm like, dude, I want to be that bitch. I feel like you are going to be a millionaire. Bitch. Absolutely. You are going to be a millionaire. I mean, that bitch and no. quiet. Like, I don't need nobody telling me anything or recognizing me. I just know my potential, like, you know, and I don't need no loud announcement like, oh, but I, I truly think in the next five years, I think I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be a millionaire. Hey, let's go. That's I think what's we're, up. That's so gonna, motivating. In five years when we shoot that episode, we're going to call it like the millionaire podcast or something. Like <laughs> all of us. I think I'm gonna be, us. we are going to be millionaires at that point. Okay, I, believe right. I believe yeah, it. Yeah, we are. We are. I yeah. think we just got to hang out or, with the right people. Circle. Yeah, learn the right information, you know. Um, yeah. So true. before we conclude, I just want to congratulate you on everything that you're doing, on Thank your you. glam, glam biz, uh, business. Glam beauty. Glam beauty artistry. I think is one of a kind. What I it's not that you're asking me for advice, but if I could give you something, <laughs> if you learn how to replicate that system and open up another one and another one, but you, I, I just love the idea that you you say one client hops up this chair, they go to the next chair, and they get to the next chair, and they leave, and they're, they're I'm pretty sure they're leaving out there feeling like a they celebrity, like a rock star. Yeah, they love and you, and that's so satisfying. Yeah, so I feel like if you could accomplish that for your brand, I think you you're gonna be a millionaire in the next five years. So congratulations yeah, on everything you're go. doing. Um, one last thing, I know your confidence and your your forwardness about any everything is what makes you a great leader because you put in the work, you put in the hours. There's no one, no one has to come and tell you that you're you're this or you're that because you know exactly where you are, right? Because you yeah. put in the hours of work and you hustled, right? And you're straight and you're just being straightforward. Yeah. I think sometimes we need leaders who now are afraid to tell us like, hey, you're doing this wrong. You better step up your game. And it's not you're easy. Up. It's not easy. It's not easy to be straightforward with you. But because I think you're like that, you're gonna be a millionaire in five years. <laughs> oh, so <thanks. laughs> uh, we're gonna pass it up to KO and let him wrap it up. Yeah, so I'm wrapping it up here. Linda, we just uh, Happy to have you here. I'm so uh, really just excited for what you got coming. I'm happy that, you know, you say you want to get into the education and stuff like that. But I also want to extend out, you know, whatever we can do as a team, because whatever whoever we bring on this podcast, we also open the doors up to them so that they can use us yeah. to get to their goals, to what they want to do. So... First and foremost, I want to let you know that, you know, it's really cool. I think we can plot outside of the camera to get your first class going. Yeah. Where there Go. is, We can get barbers <laughs> in there. We can get, you know, we, me and Diego do classes already. So yeah. we, we have a following that will definitely attend. You guys are so, so inspiring. Right there, like, you, know? you don't understand how, like, <laughs> mind blown and inspiring. I'm like, oh, my God, I want to be like you guys. Why not? Yeah, Why we want to be like you. <laughs> Thanks. <Yeah. laughs> so... That's one of the things that I want to extend out to you so you can know um, now, you know, we're building a family of people that we bring on this podcast. And I want you to know that. Have that for confidence. Reach out like, hey, I think I'm ready for the class. You got, We can help you with the location. We can help you with, you know, an audience. We can help you in, with even hey, the With the flyer, any, with the video. The flyer, I, whatever You guys is, don't hype you know? me up because I'm going to go <laughs> home <laughs> and do oh, the homework. Is a, <laughs> this is a hype. We got, so, we got videographers. You know, we, we want yeah. you to go and be like, man, that was inspiring. Imagine a few years from now, we're like, bro, we're like all millionaires. There, How are. like sick would it that is. be? That would be super dope. Roll this clip back. Roll it, roll <laughs> it back. But yeah, man, uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to make it over here. 
I know. I hope the the drive was great. Um, I hope the the drinks are great. They're and good. we'll cheers right now uh, for your success and everything. But I'm really really blessed to have you here, and thank you for so much for coming. No, thank you guys. Thank Let's you. clap it up for Let's Linda. So we also, before we leave, we want to let, you know, the audience and, you know, your fans and everyone, they, even though you say you don't think you have any fans, but I'm sure there's people out there that are going to be watching the podcast that they want to know, they may want to get their hair done with you. So let them know where they can find you at. Let Give them your Instagram. Let them know what city you work in and take it on. Yeah. So you can find me in Downey. I'm located in Downey. Hit me up on XOXO, period, Linda, L-I-N-D-A, and we'll connect from there. Thank you. Sounds good. You Let's got go. it here. Linda, was the another- first hairstylist of the DTB podcast. Let's go, Diego. This was another episode of the DTB podcast. Make sure you guys tune in, subscribe, like, comment. With this, we just wrapped it. Stay down, came up, God made a way.